Hey, welcome everyone. Welcome to another episode of Thursday Talks. Wherever you're watching this, wherever you're listening to this, we want to welcome you. We're so happy that you're joining us today. And we are excited here at Turning Point because we have two very important individuals with us, <laughs> Drew and Morgan Bullard. How are you guys? Good, very Thank good. You How are yeah. you? We are. Oh, I'm good. I'm good? well. I had yeah. a bagel this morning, so today's starting Can't well. Can't complain. Can't right. complain. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very happy that you guys um, are taking the time out to join us on the show today. Day. Thank you um, for having us. We are on a series. We are in a series right now called Influencers at Turning Point Church. And I said, what better than to have two influencers with us today? <laughs> so thank you so much. I really want to, um, on this episode, we just get into just a conversation about influencers, mm -hmm. influencing um, even the weight of that um, mm -hmm. with you guys. Can you talk a little bit about you know, how you both became influencers? Yeah, yeah, so I'll kind of, I guess, start it off. Um, I had a corporate job right out of college. I was doing sales, I traveled a lot, and I was by myself in my hotel room and was just kind of bored and knew that like I didn't really want to be doing that but really didn't know what I wanted to be doing something else. I didn't really know what that thing was and so I kind of just started it as a hobby. Um, in college and high school, I was always like the friend that people would be coming in my closet to take clothes. They'd be coming over to my apartment to get ready for events. I'd do their hair. And so I knew that had always been something that I had been interested in. Um, and so I kind of just started it. It was like a, almost a New Year's resolution. I think the New Year's after we got married, so January of 2016, um, and just started kind of just sharing the things that I wanted to share. Wow. and. Um, got pregnant with our first daughter and I feel like it really kind of took off after that. We um, like shared a video of me announcing my pregnancy to Drew and it was just like a candid video. We like kind of set it up and his reaction was priceless. It was a very sweet video and that kind of blew up and I feel like it kind of like started to take off from there. Um, and has grown into what it is today. And now Drew left his corporate job and is full time on with me. And so now we're kind of doing this, doing it together. So I love that you said that. Um, especially what I really want to zone in on is the faith to leave a corporate job. Like mm -hmm. what, what was your mentality or mindset? Like, you know, we're going to step out. We're going to do this. It was so hard. And it was something that Drew and I, I think, talked about. And I prayed about a lot. And I just felt like that feeling. I had a friend tell me about six months, I think, before I did it, she was like, God loves a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And I think that really stuck with me. And I just remember like hearing her telling me that and her in my head, because she was a business owner and she kind of did something similar. And I kind of had a goal to myself. I was like, okay, you know what? Like if I'm making close to what I'm making with my corporate job for at least six months, that's kind of enough for me to know that like, this is something that like I can sustain and like, you know, convinced Drew basically to be like, hey, I'm leaving this amazing job that like I went to Georgia Tech for and like I worked really hard to get to do this thing that no one really knows about. I mean, I think my parents even thought that I was crazy. My dad told me that last year. He was like, I had no idea this thing that you're getting into that it would turn into what it is today. And Drew, I think, just trusted me and kind of believed in me. And I feel like he's always been my number one like supporter. Um, I feel like this job, like if your partner like isn't supportive, it's it's not gonna be an easy thing and I don't right. really think you can be successful with it because at the end of the day, it's like I am sharing my life um, and so it does become really hard in that aspect sometimes. Um, but I think after I quit, um, I was actually, I think three months postpartum mm -hmm. with Olivia. Mm -hmm. So my daughter, first daughter was three months old and I just remember thinking it's like I'm doing this thing that I've created and something has to give. Like I can't be a mom, I can't have my corporate job, and I can't do – I was a blogger then, influencer wow. now. Um, and so, you know, we talked about it and I put in my letter of resignation and – I know it was, it was a lot. And so I was doing it at home by myself um, with a new baby and trying to like figure that out and then got pregnant with Rosie. Olivia wasn't even one yet. Um, then we decided to take on a major home renovation. I was like eight months pregnant at our new place. and I thought she was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I am a little bit crazy. I, we heard that the other day. It's like in a marriage, I feel like there's always one crazy person and one boring person. Mm. Drew's not the boring person, but I think he definitely like keeps me <laughs> grounded. Yeah. For sure. No, for sure. Because I have these big ideas sometimes. And he's like, that's great. But just slow down just a little bit, you yeah. know? And you just left your job as well. I did. I left in February to come help her full time. Mm -hmm. So I was in project management for about six years and I was traveling a lot on the road a lot and just prayed for the past probably two or three years. You know, I hadn't 
felt fulfilled. I didn't feel like I was really making a difference and making an impact, especially when it came to my faith. And, you know, I prayed that God would, you know, give me an opportunity to do that, whether it's, you know, with other people or in a new job or even, you know, at very minimum with my family. Mm -hmm. And I was traveling probably, you know, a week or two every month. Um, So I wasn't really seeing the girls a whole lot. And then COVID happened and I got to be at home with them the whole year, pretty much all of last year. year, And I knew, you know, being in that place, being around her, helping her when I could, being around my kids, I felt like I was starting to make a difference then. And I was able to, you know, share my faith with our girls and we got more involved with our church. Mm -hmm. Um, And it just, it seemed like a no brainer, but it was still a really hard um, decision Mm -hmm. to to leave that comfort of that corporate job and that paycheck, that steady paycheck. Mm -hmm. And then to really, you know, flop, how we've been brought up, we are, we, we were always taught that, you know, behind every great man, there's a great woman. And now, no pressure, husbands out there, because <laughs> this man's a great husband. Um, just the, just watching you right now and even hearing the story of, of how you left your own comfort to help push, you know, your wife and, and her vision, but even bring that stability, that's, that's huge, that's mm-hmm. huge. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a lot of weight being an, an, an influencer, but what do you think it means to be an influencer today? I think it means a lot of different things. I mean, I like to think that I impact people positively in their everyday life, and my faith has always been something that's been very important to me, but I've really only started sharing it, like, more within the last year. I think last year was just, it was so hard for everyone for a lot of different reasons. And you feel sometimes like you have to, you know, be perfect and have it all together. But I think when you really open yourself up and share your struggles and be like, you know what, like we don't have it all together and I am broken, but like as a Christian, like we all are. And that's like why we're all, why we're all here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why people connect to me a lot of times is because I am just very like real in that way. And, you know, it's not always perfect and our life is crazy and Mm -hmm. we have two little girls running around like, and it's been hard on our marriage, like having two little kids, you know, but it's always it's always worth the fight. Um, and I think keeping God at the center of everything um, and keeping that to be our purpose, I think has been very important. And I feel like in last year, it's really changed, I mm-hmm. think, on both how we just see so many things and how we work together and how we run our business, how we live our life, how we wanna be an example for our girls working hard, but there's such a bigger, you know, a bigger purpose here than just, you know, sharing an outfit or getting on stories and talking every day. Wow. Yeah, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head and being vulnerable, but I think when you leave like the safety and the comfort of, I guess, you know, how you're brought up and what you were hitting on, you know, you go to, you go to work and you come home and you've got this routine that, you know, you've done your whole life. But when you step out of that and you're, you're running your own business or you're doing things on your own, you really have to lean and trust God. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. It's crazy when you, you, you have these plans and you ask God to take them and, and guide you, and he always provides more than you could ever imagine, and it just blows your mind, and we've seen that this year. And, yes. Um, you know, when I left my job, it was a scary thing to do because then we neither of us had, like, a steady traditional job. And There's no, mm. like, direct deposit hitting the first of right, every right, month. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's very, I mean, it's obviously, like, we've made it work and everything, but um, sometimes it's, you know, it can be a little bit unpredictable. Yeah, but, I mean, I think... Around that same time, when I made that that jump, we really put God at the center of our marriage and at the mm-hmm. front. And you know, we've seen a tremendous impact in our lives and mm-hmm. our business. Mm-hmm. You know, the people that were around our family, our kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I think when you put God first, He gives you the opportunity to share, you know, what He's done in your life mm-hmm. and be real and show that you know you are, um, you know, you have struggles, you have you know things that other people go through and. You know, it's not all perfect all the time as, you know, social media likes to portray. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I love that kind of like the dark side of, uh, I, I would say, the influencer life. Because at the end of the day, you two are still people. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you delineate or like separate like, okay, this is content. Mm-hmm. We're dealing with this. Like, how do you play that? Yeah, so it's it's a That's fine hard. line sometimes. And it is hard and it's hard to cut off like sometimes work and life. And I'm not always the best about that. And every day, like I try to be better um, about that. But um, I think sharing it in retrospective is always good. So like after you've kind of lived it, not a year ago, but you know, say it was something that you're going through a couple weeks ago or last month, instead of getting on in the moment when you're just like, you know, feeling crazy and like all of the real raw emotions, 
going back and reflecting on it and kind of sharing like how you got through it or kind of mm -hmm. what you were going through um, and kind of how you move past that or how you're working on it currently rather than like getting on and you know crying on Instagram or you know what you know you know what <laughs> I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. we've all seen the people do yeah, it before yeah. um, I don't know if you kind of think yeah I mean I, I th that. yeah I think that's that's good you know sharing what you've learned and how you've worked through certain challenges because we're married I mean married couples have challenges we have kids you know mm -hmm. parents face challenges with their kids mm -hmm. um, you know some days are really hard um, mm -hmm. but obviously those hard moments and those hard times don't make it onto the highlight reel that is Instagram or mm -hmm. you know wherever it is and mm -hmm. um, you know it, it's neat to share you know how you've learned and made it through those experiences and grown through that and I feel like you've done a great job about just sh sharing and being open about that this year yeah and it's not always easy i think putting yourself out there like it definitely like opens the door for people to you know make comments or send you messages and things like that and at the end of the day just impacting one person positively by like sharing my faith or you know our marriage or wow. just anything like that like it's more than worth it like for us it's the messages that like I've gotten from women like saying that like I renewed their faith or like they didn't believe in God and like I started sharing stuff and it's like I literally like get chills like sitting here talking about it because at the end of the day it's like I can be doing all this stuff but if it's not for God I'm not making an impact on that then like what is it for you know yeah. and it's, I like that you said that you get the goosebumps because after watering people now they water you mm -hmm. it's like wow this mm -hmm. is this this life change is happening in your life these, mm -hmm. these things are um, um, it's what is feeding you because every you know there there are multiple kinds of influencers mm -hmm. uh, and anybody that has influence over a certain individual they have the ability to inspire or to guide their behavior mm -hmm. and to even guide their attention yep. and so you know how has God <laughs> impacted the way that you both influence? You want to go first? I've been answering all first. You want to take the floor? Even in an everyday model, not just maybe what you record. I mean, just just my approach to see people like. How, how God would see them, you know, that they are, you know, they are his children. He does love them. And, you know, they might be different from me. We might have different opinions, different values, different beliefs, but it, it means that, you know, they're still important. And mm -hmm. when you approach somebody um, with that attitude and when you want you speak to them and you show them things and you just, you go with, go to them with a, you know, a godly heart and a godly attitude, I feel like you really can connect with somebody on that kind of level. Mm-hmm. And I think just loving them too, you know, because yeah. a lot of times there's, it's like a cliche saying, but it's like what people say says more about them than about you. And I think you have to remember that, um, especially with like the unsolicited comments and things like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like, you don't really know what that person is going through. They also don't know what you're going through. But I think I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt um, and, you know, don't have malicious intentions. Um, I always try to see the best in people. Yeah, I was gonna ask, I'm glad that you touched on that. Like, how is that? Like, okay, you're you're putting yourself out there, you're being vulnerable, and then somebody comes in the comments and just mm -hmm. totally like you you missed the point there. Or you like happens all the balancing time. that is hard. How do you how do it you maintain is. or matter of fact, how does God and your faith um help you to balance your mental health? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, that is very hard because sometimes it's like you can see 10 positive things, but then that one negative thing, it just kind of sits and eats away. And mm. so something that like I've told myself, um, basically, you can't you can't read it. You know what I mean? Either deleting it, not responding to it, because I think sometimes just ignoring things and moving past it, being the bigger person and not spewing back at them like whatever you want to say even if it's in a kind way and I have said things back kindly before because I think it you know I'm like I'm not gonna let this person think that or talk to me that way because that's not right um but I think always just trying to I guess turn the other cheek in that way and be the bigger person and be like you know what like it's really not worth it like to to make anything of this because obviously they're going through something and you can just pray for them. And I don't want to be that cliche person to be like, I'm going to pray for you. But in my head, like, that's that's what I'm thinking because it's like someone who's happy and has Jesus within them doesn't treat others like that, especially strangers on the internet, you know? It's true. Well, I think it's happened to me too, just being a part of her and, and getting messages because of, you know, people that see stuff from her right. and they reach out to me. And I've tried to use it occasionally as an opportunity to, you know, reach out to somebody and pray for them or see, you know, what, what's motivating this behavior and these actions? Mm -hmm. um, why are, you know, what are you going through? Do you know Jesus? And it's actually sparked some really interesting conversations with people that have come at us really negatively before. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, but at the end of the day, you are, people are going to be upset. And I told her, I said, you know, you have 200,000 people following you. 
one person out of that bunch is going to get upset by something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're ever talking about, you know, God, Jesus, the gospel, someone's going to be upset by that. But at the end of the day, you're here to do God's work and, and honor Him. And if you to upset make somebody, Jesus known. Yeah. you're right. And mm -hmm. if you upset somebody, you know, that's going to happen. You have to know it's going to happen, but see it as an opportunity to reach them at the same time. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. And I was going to ask, like, what has been, you know, the obstacles that you faced as a Christian influencer? And this sounds like this is. Um, yeah, more, more definitely so. And I think also knowing that you might lose followers mm -hmm. by sharing, and I definitely have before. It's like the days that I do get on and talk about my faith more, I lose a lot of followers. And like, so it's like, the catch 22, it's like, do you want to continue to grow your business or do you want to do what you believe is the right thing to do? And obviously I've continued on sharing my faith and doing what I believe, you know, is my purpose and my calling. Um, and it is hard because I have a lot of friends that don't touch on that at all mm. because they consider it, you know, taboo or that's not their wheelhouse. And it's like, I get that, but I share our life and my relationship with the Lord is such a big part of my life and our relationship. Mm -hmm it would just not feel right not sharing it and not talking about it, you know? Yeah, so you're taking a, a, a no compromise approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know as well as anybody that there are really touchy things on the internet that someone talks about, you're gonna upset them. Right. And there's things you just, you don't you steer clear from. Mm -hmm. So if you talk about it, you upset somebody, but then if you don't chime in and give your opinion, people are also gonna be mad. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, and she's seen both. She's, she's spoken out about certain things or not, and. You get heat either way. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think we've just decided to, to be open and real and share our faith and how God's working in our lives and what we're going through. And, and be true to yourself, yeah. I think. Not sharing what you feel like you need to be sharing or have to be sharing, but what I feel like I want to be sharing mm -hmm. and like what, what Drew wants yeah. to be sharing. Because at the end of the day, it's we created this and... I'm not going to have, you know, Debbie on the internet telling me that I need to be doing this or that. Because I'm like, okay, Debbie, well, if you want to do that, then you start that and you do that. But that's not what I'm here for, you know? <laughs> I, I pray for you. Go, Debbie, go. You know? <laughs> no, it's I not like Debbie. That. Don't worry. Debbie's never messaged me, but... <laughs> Just in case there is a Debbie. Right, me. right. Sorry, oh. Debbie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so faith, faith is really like a huge... Um, kind of like theme of what we're talking about right now mm -hmm. and just the faith to step out to do what God is is prompting you to do mm -hmm. and um and he's caught you guys I mean you you did the scary jump mm -hmm. but he's caught you mm -hmm. he's caught you did can you share any of that man um I was I had a rough year last year with COVID and just my job changing and how you know learning to adapt to that kind of work and that style and I mean, Morgan will tell you last you know, probably October, November, December was, was probably really the hardest year of our lives. It was really year. challenging. Yeah. I yeah. concur. Yeah. And, um, yeah. mentally, I mean, just everything, like it was a very hard year for us, especially Drew. Yeah. And just trying to find that direction and, you know, praying to God and, you know, say, what am I supposed to be doing? How am I supposed to be, you know, impacting my family and mm -hmm. my friends and the people around me? And, um, I joined a discipleship group in December and, um, you know, I kind of opened up to them and told them what I was going through with my life and just looking for that direction. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I said, pray about it and ask God. And God kept telling me, you know, take that leap of faith. Trust me. This is where you're supposed to be. And I pushed it off until, you know, February, two, three months. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I told her about it probably that day. And mm -hmm. just every time I prayed to God, he's like, just trust me, trust me, trust me. And the day when he kept just like doing little things like God did, you know what I mean? And it's like, how could that be anything but a God thing? Yeah. You well, know? it's like, okay, if this happens, then I'll do it. And God's mm -hmm. like, bam, it okay. happens. Sign. Yes. It happens. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. If this happens, then I'll do it. Bam, that happens. And then it was like almost a game at this point. And Drew's like, okay, like there's no way that this is not like a divine intervention. Well, and, and yeah. then the day before I turned in my resignation, I mean, I got the biggest confirmation and sign and mm. just... You know, I just, God's like, I got you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'd already written my resignation letter. I had already, in, you know, planned on turning it in. But the day before that Sunday night, just boom, life changing. Just, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And like I was saying earlier, you have these plans and you think your plans are so big and so great. And then you, you trust God with them and he just multiplies them to, to bigger than you could ever fathom. And it's every time we just let God take control, it's like my plans are so small and insignificant. He's he's planned to do so much more. Well, and I, th I think something, too, is I feel like society has made us, I'll say us, everyone, Americans, feel like you have to check all the boxes, mm -hmm. right? We went to 
we graduated high school, we went to college, we got good corporate jobs, we were putting in our nine to five, contributing to our wow. 401k, living a comfortable life. But I feel like as Christians, we're not called to do the comfortable thing. You know what I mean? And I feel like in that uncomfortable environment and yeah. the scariness of what, what if, um, and just leaning into that, I feel like that's really when you grow and reach your full potential because it's like, I don't want to just sit back and be like, you know what, like we did the comfortable thing, we did the easy thing, it was a good life. You know, that's not the life that I want to live and I don't think that's the life that Drew wants to live. Um, and I think that's something that even like with our daughters, that's different than the way that we were raised because we both, you know, our dads have clocked into their nine to five for their entire lives right. and they've worked hard for our families and I'm so thankful for for that and I know Drew is because mm -hmm. both of our parents have made sacrifices for our families but I want to show our girls that there's not just like one way of doing things you, you know of, of something and I feel like for us we figured that out young which we're very thankful for um, but it definitely hasn't been an easy journey and I'm so thankful for that discipleship group for Drew because I think that was a pivotal point in his life with his faith and our wow. marriage, um, I think, especially with men, and I can't speak because I'm not a man, but I th obviously women were a lot more open um, like about how we're feeling no, and sharing true. things no. like that. Yeah. And it's easy for us, you know what I mean? Like, especially when you're around other women, you know, talking and just sharing. Um, and with Drew, it's like he was feeling all of these things, and I think he felt so alone because it's like he talks to me about everything, but I think there's some things that you really just need other similar um, I'll say discipleship, like with other men, I think that's very important. Um, and so I think in that environment, it really allowed him to open up and be his real self. I'll say for the first time in his life, because I feel like besides me, Drew's always really struggled, like about, you know, showing his true self and being vulnerable. Um, and that's definitely something that's always come easier for me. But I know just like for us, like in our dynamics, like yeah. we're, we are very different in that way. Um, but I think just having those conversations with other men has just been, it's been, I mean, just the changes that I've seen in him, it's been, it's been so an incredible. Um, and so if I guess anyone can take anything away from this, I guess finding, you know, those other men in your life that share those same values and that will challenge you and push you and ask you those hard questions. Um, I remember some of the questions that they asked Drew was like things that he had never really thought about before. And it's like, why, aren't, why have I not thought about this? Like, it, it makes so much sense. But until you have someone to connect with to talk about that, um, I guess guys don't think about that kind well, of stuff sometimes. And then we're, we're raised to be tough. Mm -hmm. You're okay. You're, you're not hurt. Come on. You're like, exactly. but yes, I am. <laughs> I'm yeah. really hurting right now. Exactly. So that's exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that was, that was a really awesome experience. But, but one, one thing I wanted to add to and one thing I took away from, you know, making that leap was, you know, God gives us, you know, certain things in life, certain abilities, certain talents, certain, you know, blessings or gifts or whatever it may be. And he expects us to use those according to our abilities. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we've been tremendously blessed and it would be such a shame to waste any of, you know, what God has given us, you know, whether it's in our minds or, you know, what he's blessed us with, these things on these earth, this platform, um, you know, and I feel like that we need to be using it to the most, you know, that we the can to we honor can. him. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, wow. I, agree. I love that because uh, that was actually going to be my last question. <laughs> like, how, you know, can people um, influence people around them in the world for Christ? Yeah. And, and that literally is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Whatever gift, whatever you have, go ahead yep. and at, at, at the highest capacity that you can That's influence right. people around you. Uh, for Christ. Thank you guys so much for yeah, coming. Yeah, Thank you for course. having us. Thank you for having y us. Y'all are a joy and <laughs> y'all are you. easy to even talk to. <laughs> thank man. I you. Love it. No, I, love I appreciate you. it. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for tuning in on another episode of Thursday Talks. Listen, we want you to comment. We want you to like and subscribe. <laughs> whatever way you need to follow us, go ahead and do it. But listen, whatever you do, influence, 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 and influence people for the right one. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.